Topping our morning rush, we're hearing from the teen mother who's charged for throwing her newborn baby in a dumpster. In a new video of the mom's interview with detectives, Alexis Avila told police that she did not know she was pregnant until the day before she went into labor in early January. She also told detectives that she panicked on that day. She's charged with attempted murder. A bill being proposed this legislative session could help entrepreneurs thrive here in New Mexico. House Bill 103 would give CNM $5 million for growing and improving the workforce. If passed, the money would then create a venture studio as a program that lets people begin training. Well, the bill will then be presented in the Senate Education Committee later on today. Sales taxes in New Mexico could be getting lower soon. A proposed reduction would apply to the gross receipts tax, which is levied on businesses and passed on to customers. The rate would go down a quarter of a percentage point, bringing it below 5%. A push to hold gun owners more accountable is moving ahead in the Roundhouse. Last night, a House committee approved the Benny Hargrove gun safety bill. The bill would require parents to keep their guns locked up or face criminal charges if a child uses their gun to commit a crime. The bill now advances to another committee. Erica. Here's a look at the school day forecast. A chilly start. Be sure to wear all those warm winter layers with temps at 25. By this afternoon, we're staying cool, so you'll want to keep those layers around. One of the governor's top priorities is stalled in committee this morning. House Bill 4 would have created a framework and tax incentives for creating hydrogen production hub in the state. Some lawmakers argued that hydrogen hubs are already going up, and this is the state's chance for profit from clean hydrogen development. The buildup of Russian troops at the Ukrainian border continues to increase this morning. Russia is standing by its demands for security guarantees, including the rolling back of NATO forces from Eastern Europe and a ban on Ukraine joining the alliance. The U.S. reinforced alternative proposals that it has made before. Albuquerque police and the ATF are continuing their investigation into a break in at a gun store. Belinda Gallegos, owner of ABQ Guns, says someone backed a water tanker truck right into her store near Corzo Montano yesterday. She says the would-be thief came up empty-handed because they lock up every gun each night. Well, this morning, authorities are continuing to search for the suspects who robbed a mailman. The Postal Inspection Service says that it happened near Louisiana and Copper on the morning of January 18th. These suspects were driving a black Dodge Charger and were armed with handguns during that robbery. Erica. And here's a look at the threat index. It is moderate. We're seeing very cold temperatures across the state. Uh, frostbite could be possible if you're outside without the proper clothing for too long. And we do have some snowy roads, so take it easy if you're in central or northern New Mexico. More eyes will soon be helping with the unsolved cases of missing and murdered Native Americans. Special agents and prosecutors from the Attorney General's office will now work together with the APD's cold case unit to evaluate, investigate, and prosecute the cases. Well, happening now, the city of Albuquerque is going to be handing out at-home COVID tests. The 80,000 kits are among the 1 million tests that are being requested by the governor and the Department of Health. The city is handing them out at community centers, senior centers, and public libraries. You can find out where to get one at alwaysonkrqe.com. APS has now settled a lawsuit over punishing a student for her hair. The 13-year-old black student was placed into in-school suspension at Cleveland Middle School for having streaks of purple in her hair. The girl's mother sued, arguing the school's actions constituted race-based discrimination because some non-black girls with color-streaked hair were not disciplined. All right, let's get a look at the morning drive. Here's a check on the maps. They are looking clear. No accident or slowdown. And here's a tracker going east on I-40 near Rio Grande, and everything is moving at speed. An Arizona 12-year-old isn't in junior high like other kids his age. In fact, he is so smart that he is already graduating high school and just got accepted into college. Monty Hernandez started junior college when he was only nine years old. Growing up, Monty skipped many grades and is now definitely setting the bar pretty high for those in his family. Welcome back. On this day in 1907, Roswell saw a nine consecutive days with sub-freezing temperatures. This was the longest stretch in Roswell's history. And while we are cold this morning, we've seen a pretty warm winter. No signs of this in sight. All right, time for the five facts. And number five, those hitting the slopes near Red River, Taos, or even Sipapu, they have a new opportunity in front of them. The Carson National Forest is kicking off a Ski with a Ranger program. Well, from now through the end of the season, that's going to be giving volunteers a chance to provide free educational tours on the forest's natural, cultural, and recreational features. Those tours last around 45 minutes. Number four, APS has now settled a lawsuit over punishing a student for her hair. The 13-year-old black student was placed into in-school suspension at Cleveland Middle School. Uh, in 2019 for having streaks of purple in her hair. Staff called it a distraction and a violation of the dress code. The girl's mother sued, arguing the school's actions constituted race-based discrimination since other non-black students also had streaks in their hair but were not disciplined. 
And at number three, we were seeing some patchy fog this morning, but things are looking much clearer now. We shouldn't be dealing with fog anymore, but still some snowy and slick roads across north central New Mexico. Number two now, a bill being proposed this legislative session could help entrepreneurs thrive in the state. House Bill 103 would give CNM $5 million for all all for growing rather than improving the workforce. If passed, the money would create a venture studio. One of the bill's sponsors says it's a program that lets people begin training and helps connect their ideas to the resources that they need for it to work. The bill could also provide another $500,000 to create an intensive boot camp for the unemployed or the underemployed workers. Both bills will be presented in the Senate Education Committee today. And at number one, we are hearing from the teen mother who is charged for throwing her newborn baby into a dumpster. In newly released police video, we see the moments that Alexis Avila is questioned by officers who inform her that the baby that police say she thought she got rid of had been found. Avila told police that she didn't know that she was pregnant until the day before she went into labor in early January. Hobbs police were able to find Avila with a glimpse of a license plate and then take her in for questioning. She is now charged with attempted murder.